Hello, my dear. Rhonda Constant, your favorite hometown medium, physical energy healer, oracle card advisor, paranormal investigator, voice for your loved ones. Um, I don't think I've done a reading for you before, so I'd like to explain real quick. And you've probably already seen kind of how it works. I see, hear, feel, sense, know. They talk to me, but they also show me pictures, and I call it spiritual charades. And I try to describe the picture the best I can. There is always a reason for whatever they show or say. So if it doesn't make any sense now, just keep it in mind because you'll either see it later, remember it later, or somebody else will validate it for you later. And they'll know what she's talking about. And it's not an exact science. We communicate the best way we can. Sometimes you have to stretch it outside the box a little bit. She won't give me all the details. Details are none of my business. Trying to get the smoke out of my face. <laughs> Sage. Saging. Um, but she should give me just enough so you know what she's referring to. So. Yes. Okay. So as a lot of times, these are my release cards, something you need to let go of or do. And a lot of times they'll request a card. And I shuffle until they tell me to stop. I let them pick the card out. So this is the card Savannah picked out for you. Surrender to setting limits. It is healthy to set boundaries and relationships. Practice expressing your needs and remember that no is a complete sentence. So there is nothing bad about setting limits. Setting boundaries. Um, People get in your space. Sometimes you just need to tell them no. And it's harder for us girls to do. But that's the card she picked out for you. And as and as I was shuffling, she was going, you going to tell her I love her? I love her. Tell her I love her. I said, yes, we will tell her. She's skipping. She's she's skipping. She looks like light and bright and beautiful, and she's just skipping along. Big smile on her face, all happy, showing that she's perfectly fine. He says, I did not miss your birthday. I did not miss your birthday. She says something about... Something about you missing her on your birthday and that you tried to suck up the tears. You didn't want to dampen everybody else's mood. So you tried to keep the tears to a minimum or maybe you went in the other room or but when you were in front of people, you tried to suck up the tears and put on a happy face, even though you didn't want to. And she says, it's okay, it'll get easier. With time, and my love, and I will show you I'm still here. I uh, don't remember what her picture looked like. Um, she have long hair. She's like taking her hair and like tickling the side of your face, like taking the end of her, the end of I always matter the end ends of her hair and brushing it along the sides of your face so when you feel something tickling you you can feel like everybody feels it different everybody it'll be her energy could feel like a bug crawling could feel like a hair that you can't get off and it won't stop and uh know that that's her that's her she says you'll feel her you're, you're going to be able to feel her probably as she's doing this. And it could just feel like, like I said, everybody feels it different. But like um, one time during COVID, the whole side of my face just felt like it was on fire. Just my ear was bright red. It was burning. And I thought, oh, hell, I'm getting sick. I took the thermometer and I clicked it in this ear and it's perfect. And I clicked it in this ear and the alarm went off. So it wasn't a fever. It was, it was my Bob's energy. 
you may not get it that strong, but you feel it. She's showing this side, but it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. Sometimes it's exact, sometimes it's not what they show. You could feel a warmth. You can feel just like a little pressure. Um, just something different. She's being very adamant. You're going to feel her. When you're, when you're in deep, deep grief, excuse me, it's harder for somebody to feel them, which to me is ass backwards because that's when you really need to know they're still there. But once your grief kind of starts to subside, it's easier for them to, I don't want to say get to you, but, you know, feel you or, or, or get through the blockage. Deep grief is kind of like a wall, and you're kind of like this, so it's harder for them. She says, and some people don't want to feel them because then they have to admit that they're actually gone. I don't know if she's talking about you in particular, and I'd never heard that before. I totally believe that. So, she says, but I, I'm gone, but I'm here. I'm gone, but I'm here. And I always tell people, this is our vehicle to walk around on earth in. Our spirit, our soul is inside of this. And when we don't need this vehicle anymore, then uh, our spirit and soul is still the same. And we go to be cleansed and we get lighter and brighter, and everything's beautiful. And right now, my body's getting old and decrepit, and it's like, ooh, <laughs> hang on, vehicle. Hang on a little longer. So, was there something on your birthday? that fell or made a loud bang or like something fell off the shelf or she's showing it as a big boom like something big fell off a shelf and boomed on the floor but a lot of times they um make it look bigger louder whatever so it gets my attention so it could have been something little could have been a feather but that wouldn't have made a boom that was kind of silly to say, Rhonda. So it may, may, like sometimes I'll see them walk across the floor and they'll be just stomping with their work boots, you know, trying to let their loved one know they're there. But it doesn't come out that loud. It just means they're making a great effort, if that makes sense. Okay, she's talking about some kind of a, wanted to say milkshake at first, but it looks more like a smoothie. Or it could be, a, I don't know if you have scooters, or a frappe from McDonald's, or something, something, some, it looks like strawberry, but doesn't have to be. could just be that she's showing it that way. So either you just had one, you were thinking about having one, it's your favorite thing, it was her favorite thing, she's trying to validate that it's her and, and that she knows. She Sometimes she uh, looks like that when you're sleeping. That she'll come and brush your hair off your face, pull your hair back a little bit. You may feel that. You may dream, think you dream that. That she's there touching, touching your hair, pulling it back as you're sleeping. There, there, there are dreams, and then there is a true visitation. And true visitations are kind of rare. I've only had one or maybe two. Um, at least the way you all experience it, that way other things, but um. First true visitation was 
maybe 10 years ago. I still remember everything that was said. I remember everything in the room. I remember watching him walk out the door. I remember what was in the box that he gave me. I remember all those things. Dreams, you know how they fade as soon as you wake up and start to just disappear? True visitations don't disappear. She says, I, I can't stay. I couldn't stay. I'm not supposed to stay. What they taught me is before we come down here, it's not really down here. Actually, it's here. It's very still hard for me to grasp my head around it. It's here. Before we're born, we decide our exit point. It can be when you're one day old, can be when you're 100 years old. I don't know why, but whatever that exit point is, it can move a little bit depending on what's going on with the people around you. What are they going to learn from you leaving? Or what do they, what do they need, need you to hang on for just a little bit longer? So think about your learning experience from this. Because she picked this. They won't give me an explanation why. And I don't know that we decide how we're going to leave, but we decide when we're going to leave. Which makes no sense to me, but they don't take my vote on anything. I yell at them all the time. She's talking to me. Hang on. She, she thinks you need to know that when she left, she was skipping and smiling and happy-go-lucky and just so much energy, just like she is when she came in, in the beginning of this, because she was free. It's, it's so different when we get on the other side. We have a whole different concept, and we're usually very excited. She was free. I don't know that there was anything really here on earth. She's not making it feel like there was anything on earth that really made her want to leave. But it was her time and she just felt free. She's going like this, free, I'm just free. And it's like, but it was okay with her. She was just fine, she had no pain. This vehicle feels pain. Her spirit, our soul does not. And she was free. And it's over the top excited about it. Not about leaving you or family or anything. Just because that's what her soul needed to do. Not what her body needed to do, maybe. If that makes sense. He says, give, give mom a kiss for me. I give her a kiss on the cheek all the time. I don't think she knows it. And it might, the kiss might get intense because lately they've been like, it feels like they're poking me with needles. I said the other day, I think somebody's got a voodoo doll after me. That's good. It's going, it hurts. So that kiss on the cheek, if, if they do it strong enough, because Bob's done it to me, trying to get my attention, it can, it can feel that intense, or it can just feel like a little bitty, little bitty tickle. She's going, nah, get on the cheek. And that to mom, I don't know if she's going to do that to you. She must like, <laughs> I don't know what your hair looks like. She must like your hair because now she wants to ruffle it up. And that, to me, it feels like bugs crawling across my hair when they do stuff like that. But you may feel that hair moving. Wait, if fly lands on my spikes, I can feel it. But she's trying to do it really hard. So she could just be showing she's trying 
intensely to get make that happen. It may not come across that strong. You didn't really think I would leave my favorite sister, did you? And she starts laughing. She call you favorite sister or did she call you something else? Because no, you're my favorite. Are you the only one? <laughs> only sister? She was very surprised when she left to see how many people were that upset. People that she didn't think, she didn't have a clue that they would ever be upset if she left. And it was kind of, sh it was kind of a shocking, shocking eye opener. So don't, she doesn't want you to ever underestimate. She's saying even Joe Blow down the street. I don't, I don't think she's talking about anybody in particular, nobody named Joe. Just could be a random person down the street. Might have love for you, and I'm not saying in a romantic way or anything like that, might have love for you more than you know. She says you would be surprised because she said she was surprised. She says you would be surprised how many people, even when you're walking through a store, how many people actually have love for you. But maybe they never come out and say it. Maybe they think it would be weird but that they actually care. And she found that out when she left. So that was good learning for her soul and her spirit. She would like you to know that now. And to make sure you return that love. Whether you realize they do or not, you could you can feel if somebody hates your guts. It's that nasty negative energy if they don't have that nasty negative energy towards you, shoot them a little love. Just pretend like you're shooting red hearts at them. You don't even have to talk to them. Okay, she, she's telling me when I, when I walk down by our river, and there's a lot of people go down there and sit on those benches, and they look really sad. You know, they're sitting there thinking and probably lonely. Some of them are homeless down there. And I, I send like red hearts, maybe put a pink blanket around them, not physically. And I don't even have to stop and talk to them. You can do that too. That's what she's talking about. She wants, she wants you to do that because you will get the love back so much more than you ever dreamed. And she said, I got love back so much more after I passed and, and re I realized how much everybody loved me. And I wish, I, I wish I'd realized that while I was still here. So she's trying to give you this gift. So she's making a big, long speech about it. She's trying to give you this gift of knowing how many people actually love you that don't usually express it. So she's going on and on about it. Make sure you clean up after yourself. I don't know if she's talking physically or emotionally, more emotional. Um, just clean up your mess. I don't know that she's talking about like you need to go clean your room or something. You need to go clean the kitchen. I don't think it's a physical thing that she's talking about. She's not elaborating on that now. <laughs> she's laughing. She goes, where would you be without me? Where would you be without me? It's like she's taking all the credit for you being you. I 
Remember when I used to pull your hair and pick on you? She's talking about when you're way younger. And I would get so mad that you would touch one of my toys that I would throw it at you. He says, that's, that's just being sisters. Figured out that I loved you more than that. All of a sudden, I felt I needed to straighten something up on my desk. Um, I don't usually do that during a reading, so maybe she is talking about physical stuff. You need to go clean your room. She wants to know she will always be there for you. And I promise you a thousand percent, she can hear you. She can see you. You may not be able to hear her, but she's listening. So talk to her all you want to. She can hear you. And you don't have to talk out loud. But that, that she's going to leave. He wants you to be, she wants you to be a dancing machine. She wants you to like, Nobody's home, crank up the music, go to your room and crank up the music and dance, dance, dance like nobody's watching, which they don't need to be watching. It's for you to do alone. Good grief, my dogs. She said she'll be in there dancing with you. Dance, ask her to join you. Give her permission. Ask her. Uh, there's been times that I've gone to people's houses and like some man will be standing in the corner and I go, why are you standing over there? And he goes, I don't want to scare them. I don't want to step forward because they'll think there's a demon in the house or there's a boogeyman or, or it's a ghost. or So he just stands there and observes instead of stepping forward because some people don't want it. And... They don't want to scare you. Well, <laughs> some of them do. Like, if you got Henri Brothers or something, I've seen a lot of them go, yeah, I'm, watch me scare the crap out of my sister. But now she's leaving. She says, I love you very much, boo. We stink at names. Used to get them exact, don't anymore, don't know why. So anyway, nicknames are the same, so she called you Boo. Okay. Thank you very much for being patient. And um, darn it, there was something I was going to say at the end of this. <laughs> I'm old and forgetful. Um. Oh, normally, like where it was going to be your birthday and stuff, normally I would jump you way ahead of the line and do that. I just couldn't at that time. And I would have done it on your birthday, for your birthday. I just couldn't. Get some other issues going on. Anyway, thank you very much. Rhonda Constant, your favorite hometown medium, physical energy healer, oracle card advisor, paranormal investigator, voice for your loved ones. Be good, dear.